Welcome everyone. We are here today with the Virtual Excel Academy and staying home. Five fun things to do and more. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are. We're here with you and we're excited to be with you at our Virtual Excel Academy. Today's session, Staying Home, Five Fun Things to Do with Kate Cadillac. She will be our guest speaker today and our hosts are Leanne Grillet from APA. Hello, everyone. Charlotte Cushman from Perkins, Texas School for the Blind and Paths to Literacy. Oh, you're on mute. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Welcome. And Amaya is with us today. And we have three extra, extra special guests joining us today. Dodger, Kate's guide dog. And Kate might want to spend a moment to just tell you a little bit about Dodger. Sure. Dodger is a 68-pound yellow lab guide dog from Guiding Eyes for the Blind. I talked about him the other day during my lesson and I got some people who wanted to know what he looks like. So he is a very light color. He was described to me as being like a toasted marshmallow. So when a marshmallow starts to brown, when it's over a fire, it can turn any shade of from a very, very light yellow to like a dark brown, even black if it's burnt. And so they said he looks like a very light toasted marshmallow, but then he has some of uh, some darker brown shades around his body. And he is a magnificent guide dog who loves to cuddle, run around, and play tug of war. And he is sitting down on his um, hind legs, and he's attached to a leash with the cutest face, just saying hello to everyone here, all our friends here. We also have Kate's retired guide dog. This is Sawyer. Yeah, oh, sorry. Sorry, this is Hosta. Hosta. And Sawyer, his friend, the black cat. And um, Sawyer is lying on the couch all cuddled up, looking like he's ready to take a nap. And, uh, or, sorry, I'm getting them confused. Hosta is lying down on the couch all curled up. And it looks like Sawyer maybe giving him a, a slight bath with her tongue, licking his ear, maybe. <laughs> yeah they they all my animals they they love to lay together and clean each other and just have fun it's pretty cool and we would love to know who you are so as you're joining us today if you could tell us in our chat window who you are and maybe where you're from and our question of the day today what keeps you busy and what do you like doing what keeps you busy and what do you like doing hello brian Hello, Andrea. Good afternoon, Grace. Karen, welcome from Georgia. Ryan, welcome from Texas. Elena from Hawaii, aloha. Lisa from Las Vegas. Phoebe, Zoe from Seattle. Mike from New Hampshire. Dana from Colorado. We have someone from Macon, Georgia. And Cyan, it's okay. No worries about being late. We're just glad you're here. Denise, welcome. Some things that people are saying they like to do. Um, uh, oh, a small farm with five children. That sounds like a lot of fun. Hello from Puerto Rico. All right, I'm going to let Kate take it from here, but keep on adding just a couple more comments there as we transition to Kate. All right, thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to our fourth and final lesson in the staying home unit. Our topic for today again is tips for staying busy and fun things to do from home. In our last session we talked about processing our feelings during uncertain times. I heard from a lot of you that what you might be feeling is bored. Well, that makes a lot of sense to me because things are closed. We're all staying home more, not getting out as much as we're used to, not interacting with as many people. And because we find ourselves staying at home more, if you're like me, you might be wondering day after day, what in the world am I going to do? So today we're going to brainstorm together. I have some ideas, but I want you to hear from one another. 
so you can help each other come up with ideas that are working for you. Our goals for this lesson are to identify what is boredom and why do we feel it. We're going to discuss ideas for staying busy during social distancing, and we're going to share ideas with one another of fun things to do. Let's start with feeling bored. I love my definitions. So, what does it mean to feel bored? We're going to turn the chat box on, and I just want to mention that, um, like the other sessions that I've led, I'm listening to JAWS screen reader, and so it's really helpful to me if you type your responses in the chat box so I can listen with JAWS. If you don't have access to the chat box, you can raise your hand, unmute your audio, and we may call on you. Um, but again, it is, it's helpful if you have the ability to access the chat box that you type your comments and questions in there. So think about what does it mean? to feel bored. What does it mean to be bored? To feel like there's nothing to do, another person echoes. Not seeing friends and feeling lonely, says someone else. Jonah says, nothing sounds good to do. To feel bored is to feel like you don't have anything to do, says someone. Having nothing interesting to do. So I'm noticing a theme here. Someone else is saying that they, it feels like you don't have anything to do or like you don't have the motivation to do things. So I'm sensing a theme here that boredom, relate, being bored, relates to feeling like there's nothing going on. We're going to talk more about that. According to psychology today, boredom is an unpleasant emotion in which a person feels an ongoing lack of interest and difficulty concentrating on the current activity. I'm gonna repeat that. According to psychology today, boredom is an unpleasant emotional state in which an individual feels an ongoing lack of interest and difficulty concentrating on the current activity. Put more simply, like all of you, eloquently said, boredom is the feeling of having nothing to do or the feeling of having not enough to do. Here's some interesting information for you. It was estimated that 91 to 98 percent of all youth feel bored at some point in their day every single day. Out of 100% of youth, 91 to 98% of them feel bored at some point in their day, every single day. That means there's a lot of bored young people in the world each day. And that was before social distancing that those, that those numbers were released. Are you part of that group? Do you feel like you have nothing or not enough? to do, especially now that we're all staying at home, not going to as many places or interacting with as many people. I know I, especially when this first began, really was feeling like I didn't have enough to do. Like we said, feeling like you don't have enough to do is one of the causes of boredom, but there are additional things that cause boredom as well. Feeling bored can be a result of too much of the same thing. So when you first started staying home, it might have been really exciting to you when your parents said, hey, guess what? You don't have to go to school tomorrow. Like on a snow day or in the summer, you might have celebrated being off and you might have found yourself engaging in some activities that you really enjoy. 
you may have felt excited that you had time to play games, hang out more with the people in your home. Maybe your parents and other family members even made it a point to create fun activities for you to do from home. But then after a while of staying home every single day, did the newness wear off? Did you start getting tired of the same old things happening every day? If so, that loss of interest and repetition, that's feeling bored. Too much of the same thing. We can even get bored of flavors. So one summer, I went strawberry picking and I brought home barrels and barrels of ripe, red, delicious strawberries. It's my favorite fruit. And I must have eaten strawberries for weeks. I made strawberry pie and strawberry jam. I put strawberries in pancakes. I put strawberries on ice cream. I put strawberries in my freezer so that they wouldn't go bad so I could keep having strawberry everything. And the first few days, it was wonderful. I loved it. And then eventually, I got really tired of the flavor of strawberries. And I didn't want to eat them anymore. I got bored with strawberries. We can get bored with just about anything that we have too much of. Whether it's a flavor, a taste, a smell, an activity, we can even get bored by hanging around the same people. Can you relate to that? Have you ever been bored with an activity that you were doing that maybe you once really loved? Have you ever felt bored hanging out with the same person or people all the time? Being at home and interacting with the same people each day, maybe there's part of you that feels a little bored with them. And I'm here to tell you that's okay. It doesn't mean that you don't love your family members. It doesn't mean that you don't care for them anymore. It's a natural part of being human that we feel bored when we see the same people or do the same things over and over and over again. But we can help ourselves by varying things up. Everyone has different levels of needs for novelty. Do you know what the word novelty means? It's basically a word for things that seem new to us. So someone has, who has a need, a high need for novelty, they like experiencing newness a lot. Someone who has a high need for novelty, they're going to feel more bored if they don't have a lot of new things to do often. People who have a lower need for novelty, they usually are more comfortable doing the same things day to day. My good friend can eat a peanut butter sandwich literally every single day for lunch. He never gets bored with peanut butter sandwiches. I ate peanut butter sandwiches for just about every day when I was in grad school, and that was several years ago, and I still can't eat peanut butter sandwiches. So you might say that I have a higher need for novelty, for flavors, than my friend does. Think about yourself. Do you have a high need for new things? Do you have a high need for novelty? Or are you more comfortable experiencing the same things each day? And that would mean that you have a lower need for novelty. And right now, with social distancing, there might not be a whole lot of novelty in your world. Boredom is also caused by a wondering attention. If something doesn't catch our attention and then hold our attention, we can usually get bored by it. Think of a television show that you may have watched. If you really like what you're watching, chances are it keeps you engaged and it keeps your attention. So you're probably not bored by it. Same thing with a game. If you really like it and your attention is on it, chances are you're not feeling bored by it. To review, feeling bored can be caused by too much of the same thing, when things lose our attention. But sometimes feeling bored 
is just the result of not having enough to do. What about you? When are you likely to feel the most bored? With social distancing, is it a certain day of the week? Is it during the weekend? Is it in the mornings, the afternoons, the evenings? Or does time not really matter right now because each day kind of feels the same? It's helpful to be able to identify the times when you most regularly feel bored. So then you can make a plan to change things up, to find things that grab your attention, to make sure that you're not experiencing too much of the same thing, and to make sure that you have enough to do. Though it might not feel great in the moment, nobody likes feeling bored, it's actually an opportunity. Think about that. Feeling bored is an opportunity. What do you think I mean by that? I'd like to hear from you. What do I mean by this statement? Feeling bored is an opportunity. We're gonna turn the chat box on. Go ahead and type your responses. What do I mean when I say that feeling bored is an opportunity? Paul says it's an opportunity to create new things. Jennifer says you might have time to do things that you ordinarily wouldn't try. Zoe says they're not sure and that's okay. Someone else says you may be choosing not to do anything. Susan says by an opportunity, you may be able to explore and find new interests. Uriah says you can take chances to try new things. Nadia says time to make a craft. Nancy says you're motivated to try new things and be creative. Someone says to go out and be active. I'll take a couple more. Opportunity to get creative. Sounds like many of you are on the same page with this. And Jillian says, you might have time to read more books. These are great ideas and exactly along the lines of what I was thinking. Again, though it doesn't feel good to feel bored, how we frame thoughts about feeling bored and how we frame our body's response to it can really change the entire experience. It's not going to be easy every time, but when you start noticing that you're feeling bored, try and think of it as an opportunity to take action. We talked on Tuesday about different feelings that we experience that experience and how we experience them. So remember that when you feel bored, it is our mind and body's way of communicating something to us. It may, feeling bored may be our mind and body's way to communicate that something no longer has our attention or that we just simply don't have enough going on. So let's think of the boredom opportunity as a moment where we can get creative about what we want to do next. Again, in our last lesson, we talked about feelings are immediate responses to things in our environment and things in our head. So let's think about how our bodies feel when you're bored. What thoughts go on in your head? What is your body like? Is your heart rate fast or slow? Is your breathing fast or slow? Do you feel restless? Are your legs kind of twitchy? Do you just want to get up and move? Do you feel unmotivated? Again, it's helpful to identify when you're feeling bored and how that makes your body feel and how that influences the way you're thinking. Because once we identify it, it's an opportunity to take that action. Now let's talk about what to do about it. People very rarely say that they're bored when they're busy. 
Have you ever noticed that time goes a lot faster when you have a lot going on? I have. Sometimes Mondays are the busiest day of the week. I'm constantly trying to catch up. What do I have to do today so that I can be prepared for the rest of the week? Did I check all the things off on my to-do list? Go through my work day or for you guys at school, come home, cook for the rest of the week, get my laundry done. Before I know it, I've woken up, gone through my whole day, and it's time to go to bed again. And the reason that I felt so busy is because I had so much going on, I didn't have a moment to feel bored. Then again, on a Sunday, for me, that's usually the time when I don't schedule a whole lot of things. And it's most likely that I'm going to experience boredom or feel bored on that lazy Sunday when there's not a whole lot grabbing my attention, when there's not a whole lot going on. What about you? When are you most likely to feel bored? Again, you might be experiencing boredom more now that you're staying home because it is a lot harder to get out and do things. But even though we're all staying at home more, there are some things we can do to help. As I said, being busy is a great step towards not feeling bored. My first tip is to have structure to your day. In other words, this means to have a plan. So the reason I feel bored on some Sundays is because I don't have a lot going on. I don't have a plan. I wake up and as I go through my day, I keep thinking what's gonna come next. And sometimes that's nice, right? Sometimes we can really enjoy just a leisurely lazy Sunday or any day of the week, but it can get kind of old. And remember, too much of the same thing is what can lead people to feeling bored. So having a structure or a plan to your day can be really helpful for avoiding feeling bored, making sure that you don't have too much boredom in your life. But how do you make a plan? You gotta think about what do I want to do? What are the resources that I have available to me? How much time would certain activities take? When will I begin? How will I know I'm done? And is this something that I wanna continue to do? Let's take a moment to think of a typical school day. That probably feels like it's a whole other world because it's probably been a while since you've been at school. But think back to when you had a typical school day. Let's imagine that each day when you start at school, your teachers just had no plan. You got there and they said, well, everybody, what do you wanna do today? Now, again, you might be thinking, that'd be awesome. I'd love if my teachers didn't have a plan because I'd just play all day, do recess, or hang out with my friends. But again, would that get old? Some of you might be thinking, yeah. And some of you might be thinking, I think I'd be okay with that because we all experience different levels of need for novelty or things that are new. We all experience a need for things to be less repetitious than others. Some of us are more okay having the same thing over and over again. But I suspect, whether you wanna admit it or not, that if you went to school every single day and there was no plan for what was gonna happen, people would start to feel kind of bored. Schools have a structure and a plan for every day for a whole lot of reasons. It keeps people engaged. Remember, attention is important for not being bored. And also, we have to be learning at school, and for that, we need to be having our attention on what we're learning. Keeping a plan and having structure keeps things moving forward. And also, structure is comforting to most people. Do you like knowing what's coming up next? Some people have a high need for that, and some people don't require that as much. You have to figure out where do you fall? What is your level of need for knowing what's coming next? Do you like to be able to anticipate A and B, and once that happens, C and D come next? Or are you more comfortable with the scramble? C's happening now, but I'm not sure if A, B, or D is happening after that. 
Now, schools are closed. We don't have that same structure or plan. But do you have a plan for the days that you're not in school now? Weeks ago, when social distancing began, did your family come up with a plan for you? Did you help contribute to the making of that plan? Has the plan stuck around? How has it changed? Or are you reflecting that you actually don't have a plan? Whether or not you have one, think about, is this working for you? If you don't have a plan, do you think you might benefit from having one? Parents, caregivers, and other family members are great resources for helping to make a plan to stay busy. Some things you wanna make sure of with that plan is that you don't overbook yourself. It can get really overwhelming if you schedule every single minute of every single day. Again, think back to a typical day at school. You might know that you're gonna be in math class from 9 a.m. to 9.45, but you don't know exactly what you're gonna be working on from 9.01, 9.02, 9.03, and so on. And that's okay. There can be some changes in the schedule if they're minute like that. But in general, it's good to know in chunks of time what the plan is, what you're gonna be doing. I'm curious to hear from some of you. We're gonna turn the chat box on. And I wanna hear what are some of the structures that you have in your day? Do you always eat breakfast at 8 a.m. or lunch, have lunch at noon? Do you always go for a walk in the evening? What are some of the things that you plan for each day? I'm listening now to Jaws. Roxanne says that they have family with dinner every single night. That's part of a routine or a plan. Excellent. Catherine says she has to have coffee every single morning. Someone else says, I always do this class at 11. Someone else says they wake up every single day at the exact same time. Zoe says that they make breakfast each day. Corey says that they walk their dog every day. Someone else says that they work on school work at the same times throughout the day so that it's predictable. Michael says after studies, they're able to go to the beach. So that's setting a goal and making the fun stuff come next. Someone else says that their chores are always at the same time. Someone else is agreeing that they also wake up at the same time. I'll pause for another moment to see if there are any other responses. Someone says that they watch TV and listen to music at the same time. And someone else says that they go for walks. Excellent. If you don't have a plan, that's okay. But again, it's helpful to think about whether you would benefit from one. And I will tell you, most people do benefit and feel better, less bored when they have a plan. My next tip is to have a routine. So it's one thing to have a plan for what you're gonna do, but it doesn't mean that that plan is gonna be the same each day. Creating a routine means to, to make sure that some parts of your day are the same. Chances are that you already have some routines in your life already. Do you brush your teeth each night before you go to bed? That's part of your routine. It's also part of the plan of your day. So some of our plans can have a routine and some parts of our plan can be outside of our routine. Do you eat breakfast, lunch, dinner again at the same time? That's part of the routine, that's part of your plan. Do you shower at the same time each day? Again, do you go to bed at the same time? What are some things that generally happen at the same time each day? It's part of a plan and it's part of a routine. You can make a different plan for every single day. That would be a plan that doesn't have a lot of routine. Or you can have a plan that's the same for every Monday, but Tuesday's plan is different. You could have a plan that's the same for every single day. 
breaking this down is really up to you. How detailed and specific you want to get with it. And again, if you're not really sure where to start, go ahead and ask people in your household. Ask them, what are some of your plans? What are some of your routines that help you feel less bored? And our routines and structures can change over time. Because remember, sometimes people feel bored when we experience too much of the same thing and when things start to lose our attention. So if you have a routine and a plan that works for you one week, and then you start to get a little bit bored with it, mix it up. Revisit the drawing board and come up with a new plan and a new routine for the next day, the next week, maybe even the next month. Routines can be kept in our heads, but sometimes it helps to write them down. I have some additional tips for your structured plans and routines. You want to be realistic. Again, I talked a bit about not wanting to overwhelm yourself and pack in too much. Some of you may be able to relate when social distancing first began. I was seeing a lot of people, especially parents, post on social media their children's plans for the day. And I would hear things like this, 7 a.m., child wakes up, 7.05, brush teeth, 7.10, come down for breakfast, 7.40, walk the dog, 8 o'clock, study for first class, 8.20, take a short break for milk, 8.30, so I just keep going on, and these little chunks of time, they were broken down to the minute, and so these plans were pages and pages and pages long. And by the end, I heard parents reflecting that they were overwhelmed by all the things that they tried to fit in to their day. So when we make our own plans or when we help our parents and family members make plans for ourselves, it's important that we recognize that we don't want to try and fit in too much. It's kind of a balance. And if you're not sure how to strike that, just write it out, try it and then change it depending on how it goes. Be open to adjusting the schedule. Nothing is set in stone. If you write it in braille, get a new piece of braille paper and write it again or scratch it out. Writing our plans digitally, like on a computer, a note-taking device, or a phone, that can be pretty easy to delete things and revise. If you write on paper, again, just get a new piece of paper or cross things out. Another tip is to be forgiving to yourself if you stray from the plan. Sometimes people think of their plans as goals that they have for the day, and it can be pretty disappointing if you were planning on working out every single day for an hour. And if you don't do that, try not to feel so bad. It's all right. Just get up and try it again the next day. And if that doesn't work, you may need to consider changing the plan so that you are setting a goal for yourself to work out maybe every other day or maybe once a week, whatever is the most realistic for you. I'm gonna take a moment here to pause and see if there are any questions. You can type your questions in the chat box. And if you don't have access to the chat box, as a reminder, you can raise your digital hand, turn your microphone on, and we can unmute you. And I'll start there. We have Sanaya. Sanaya, do you have any questions? Sorry, I, didn't, I, I was trying to lower my hand because I didn't have, I was raising my hand for the other part. What did you want to share? Oh, uh, you know what? I, I forgot now. <laughs> that is okay. No problem. That's Let's okay. try Uriah. Hello. Hi, Uriah. Hi. Um. So my question is, what if you can't like do any sports? What can you do if you're bored about that? Hmm. Good question. What can you do if you can't play sports? There are so many different options for things that we can do. 
And I love the idea of sports because they're a way of being physically active and exercise and engaging our bodies is so important for our minds, our mental health, our bodies, staying healthy, all kinds of things. But a sport doesn't always have to be involved playing on a team or hitting a ball or kicking a ball or anything like that. To me, a sport can be anything you want it to be. You can play the sport of a game that you find. You can engage in physical activity by just taking a walk. And we're gonna talk about some additional ideas. I have five today, five ideas for avoiding being bored, five activities that I think are fun. And I wanna hear more from you. So maybe you'll get some more ideas for things that you can do besides playing sports. We have one more are question there any other from Keene. Hopefully I said it right, Keen. Hello. Hi, we can Hi, hear Keen. you. Uh, Kate, how are you doing? Um, just I'm good. How are you? What's your question? I'm, I'm grand. Just uh, my question is, what's your routine? Don't mind me asking. I don't mind you asking at all. So I'm the type of person who really does benefit from a bit of structure. So each morning I set my alarm clock for 7 a.m. And I know that I'm kind of a groggy person in the morning. So usually, even though I set my alarm for seven, I don't get out of bed until 7.30. And that's good self-awareness because even though I could set my alarm for 7.30 and I'd be fine if I were actually to get up out of bed and start getting ready, I just know that that's not gonna happen. So I set my alarm for seven. I give myself some time to slowly wake up, make my mind more alert, and then I get up and I get into the shower. And that usually takes me about a half an hour before I'm downstairs and able to make breakfast. I give myself one hour to make breakfast, eat breakfast, take my animals out to the bathroom, feed my animals. And then by 9 a.m. typically, I'm sitting at my computer and I'm working. I usually work from about nine to noon each day. And then I give myself time to go outside for my dogs to relieve themselves get some lunch, and then by 12.30, I'm usually back on my computer and working till about five o'clock. I do take a break around three to get some coffee, stretch my legs, sometimes I even go for a short walk, let my animals out again. At five o'clock, pretty much every single day, I'm usually going to take a walk to a nearby beach with my family. It's one of my one of the things I look forward to the most um, during social distancing. Never before have I been able to go for a long walk with my family, my sister, my nephew, and my brother-in-law. Every single day we go to this beautiful beach and it's so relaxing and it gives me time to recharge from my day. And then when we get back, it's usually about 6.30 and we make dinner together. And then at night we usually, I have a very musical family, so we usually play the piano and sing together. Sometimes we'll watch a movie. And then I have an evening snack and I usually go to bed around 10 o'clock. So that's my schedule. It might sound really busy to you or it might sound like I don't have a lot going on. Everybody's structure, routines, plans are different. I've been able to find what works for me. And I think that's an important thing for you to do for yourself as well. I Thank think you we're ready to questions. move on. <laughs> All right. So since part of being bored is feeling like you don't have enough to do, we're going to talk about some ideas of things that you can do from home. Again, everyone is different. And what interests you might not interest someone else. I talked about how I really love taking long walks and going to the beach, but maybe that doesn't interest you and that's okay. So I'm going to share some ideas today that I thought sounded pretty cool, but they might not sound good to you. And that's why a big part of this time today is having you all share your own ideas. So you'll have a chance to share ideas as well. The first idea for things you can do while at home that I wanted to share with you today is to start a book club. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, I can't do any sort of club because of social distancing. But actually, you can. Think about what does it require to be part of a book club? Well, for starters, you need a book. 
And if you like to read, this is an activity that might interest you. If you're not a fan of reading, think about what opportunities being in a book club can also provide you. Maybe you don't love the reading part of it, but you might like the social part of it because the word book club implies that you are participating in this activity with other people. How in the world can we do that when we can't be within six feet of other people outside of our home? Well, you could do a virtual book club over Zoom or Google Hangouts or some other video conferencing system or even just by the phone. As a group of people, you could get your family members together, the people in your home. You could get a group of like-minded friends together. You could reach out to some of your classmates and you could say, hey, are you interested in being part of a book club with me? So again, to do this, you would need to start with at least one book. Think about some books that you enjoy and think about the people who are gonna be part of your book club and what would they like to enjoy. Next, once you have the book and the people you're gonna to invite to the book club, you're going to need a time. How often is this group going to meet? What are the things you're gonna talk about? I assume you're gonna be talking about the book, but is there gonna be a leader who's facilitating or helping the conversation along? You wanna make sure that, especially for your first book club meeting, that you have some sort of plan for how it's going to go. Some ideas, you could send a list of questions or talking points ahead of time to the people who are gonna be participating, or you could just send them a note or talk to them and say, uh, we're just going to kind of meet over the phone or over video chat, and we're just gonna talk about this book. So bring your ideas, your questions, and it'll just kind of be a time for free thought, free chat about what we, what we think about the book. Sometimes, um, one of my favorite part of book clubs is having other activities that are taking place while we're talking about the book. Because again, to me, uh, book club is really just an excuse to get together with people and have something to talk about. But also, maybe you make it a time that everybody is bringing their favorite food to the book club. Since we're social distancing, you probably won't be able to taste their food, but you can listen as they describe what they made, how they prepared it, why they enjoy the flavors. Maybe you share a recipe as you're talking about the things that you liked about the book. Maybe you are a coffee lover, or for me, Diet Coke. Maybe you ask that each person comes to the book club meeting with their favorite drink. Maybe you ask that everybody wears a purple shirt. Make it silly, get creative with it. Again, it's really just an opportunity for you to connect with others around a topic that everyone enjoys. And if everybody has read the book, then you know you're gonna have stuff to talk about. Also, as part of your plan, decide whether in your first meeting, are you gonna be asking that everybody has read the entire book? Or are you gonna be asking that people finish certain number of chapters. Maybe you ask that everyone finishes the first 20 pages or 50 pages. You wanna make sure that everyone's on the same page, that everyone understands when they're coming to, to the book club, how it's gonna be held, such as over Zoom, you would wanna send a Zoom link. Who else is gonna be there? Is there an agenda or topics or how the conversation is gonna flow? Is there any sort of theme? Again, like, what do I wear? Do I have to bring any other materials? And how much should I have read of the book? If you're not sure what book that your club would like to read as a group, you can poll them, use those technology skills, create a Google form or some sort of other poll that you can send to people, maybe putting a list of books, book recommendations that you've liked to read and link to that book on a site that would review it and ask people to vote which book they would be most interested in reading. If you're not sure who to invite, again, you can ask your family members or other people in your home. Your teachers are also great resources for other people who might be able to connect with you. Maybe they have other students at your school or at other schools who might be interested in joining. Take control. Choose something that really interests you, like a book club, and make it happen.
The next idea that I had for a fun activity is pretty broad and general, but I just have to mention how important I think it is to move your body. And I'm not talking specifics here. It could be yoga, it could be getting on a spin bike, but I hear from a lot of people, I've heard from a lot of students recently, when I say, when I ask them, so are you getting enough exercise? They say, well, I can't really exercise because I'm stuck at home. And here's what I say to that. Bologna and cheese sandwiches, people. We can move our bodies, we can exercise, no matter how much space we have, no matter whether we're in our homes or outside of our homes. Just because you can't get to a gym, just because you don't have gym class right now, does not mean that you can't find ways to move your body. You don't need much space to do this. You can exercise even just by sitting down in a chair, stretching your body, moving your arms up and down, moving your legs up and down. Or better yet, if you can, stand up and move in place. You can march your legs up and down. You can do jumping jacks. You can run in place. You can use your own body weight as a way of increasing your heart rate, like push-ups, sit-ups. There are some crazy things called mountain climbers that I really love to do. And if I'm saying some exercises that you're not sure about, I wish I had time to show and tell you how these things go today, but unfortunately there isn't time. So make a note of it. Look up what are mountain climbers on the internet. And if there are pictures that you can't see, because I've noticed a lot of times with exercises, there are photos that go along um, when people are learning how to do them from the internet. Get Ira, technology, be my eyes, or people in your house to help you figure it out. The point is, get those heart rates beating and pump that blood through your body so that we stay mentally and physically healthy. Also, on the Virtual Academy recorded list, I found that there was a great episode on yoga. So check that out because yoga is a wonderful way of engaging your body, getting your heart rate up, but also finding ways to be more relaxed. I have a few more ideas I'm going to go through, and then I want to hear from you. My, my third idea, again, this is sort of broad, but I'm going to get more specific. The third idea is to learn a new skill. You might have some of your own ideas that are unique to you, or you may not be sure at all what new activity or skill that you would like to engage in. So you can begin by asking yourself some questions. What would I like to learn or get better at? What resources would I need to develop this skill and are they available to me? When will I focus on this skill and how much time is needed? And coming back to goals, it's a good idea to give yourself small, realistic goals for developing your skill. That way you can celebrate your successes and be motivated to keep going. If you're not really sure, I have no idea what kind of skill I'd be interested in, in learning, talk to the people in your home about some of their skills. I had completely forgotten how much I love music until I came and stayed with my sister a month ago. And now I've been here for many days and each day we get together as a family and we sing. And since then, I actually started doing virtual singing lessons. So I found an online music group that offers music lessons over Zoom. And I'm doing that once a week. And in between those sessions, they're giving me songs that they want me to practice and learn. And suddenly, once where I was bored, now I'm finding myself full of an activity I love, singing and listening to music. Maybe someone in your family plays an instrument that you would like to learn. Ask them how they developed that skill and if they wouldn't mind taking some time out to help you learn. Or you can always do some self-learning. The internet is an amazing place with a vast amount of information. Maybe someone in your home speaks a language that you would like to learn. And they, you could start by just having them teach you how to count to 10, learning the alphabet, how to write in a new language if, if you already speak it. Can they build something with you? Again, think about what resources you have available to you ask if you need support in learning a new skill and just start doing it. Four, give a theme to every day. You could try doing this every day for a week or every day for a month, but either way, 
Choosing a theme for each day can make it more exciting. So what is a theme? A theme is like a topic. So a th an example of a theme for a day could be as simple, again, I'm gonna go with my last example, music. Maybe every Monday is Music Monday and you are going to learn five, you're going to discover five songs that you really enjoy. Or you're going to say it's Music Monday, everything about my day is going to be related to that theme. I am going to make pancakes and I'm gonna use a music note shaped cookie cutter to make music note shaped pancakes. How delicious. And while I'm making those pancakes, I'm gonna to listen to some country music that happens to be my favorite. And as you go throughout your day, maybe you only speak to people by singing to them. There are lots of ways to go with a theme. You just have to get creative. And that's part of the fun of it too, is just using your, the power of your mind, your brainstorming creative juices to come up with ideas. Use your family members, ask your siblings, your parents and caregivers what ideas they might have. Maybe you decide that each week you're gonna have the theme of a different holiday. I realize that it's April, but maybe you're gonna have Independence Day in April. And then maybe if you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or another holiday in the winter, maybe this year Christmas is gonna fall on April 25th. Maybe because the uh, because New Year's was so far away now, it was four months ago, maybe you wanna celebrate New Year's all over again. You could have a theme of animals where you draw pictures of animals or write about animals, write a story about them. You go online and research different kinds of animals. The possibilities are endless. The last, the fifth and last idea that I wanna share before we open the chat box and get ideas from you is again, it's kind of broad, but I think it's important to say, just get outside. Again, I'm hearing from so many students and other people that they feel trapped by the walls of their homes, but we don't have to be. Even though there's social distancing and we can't be too close to people outside in the world, it doesn't mean that we always have to stay inside of our homes. Sometimes you can open up your windows and you can get a breeze going in your house. Other times you can just step outside and where, whatever kind of place you live in, whether it's a house, an apartment building, a condo, whether you're on the sixth floor or the first floor, it doesn't matter. If you need help getting outside and, and knowing how to get around, that's okay, just ask for help. But I think it's important each day for everyone to get some time where they're exposing their skin and their lungs to fresh air sunlight, if there is any that day, but even on kind of those gloomy days where there's a little bit of rain, sometimes it can feel good just to get outside. Breathing fresh air is so important. Even if the only place you can go is to the end of your driveway, I'd say it's worth it. And if you can take longer walks and get your body moving even longer, even better. So now I wanna hear from you. Share ideas with one another. What are some of the fun activities that you've been doing since social distancing became a thing? I'm hearing some raised hands and I'd love to hear some comments as well. Go ahead and type them in the chat box now. Sam says, have a coffee. That is a fun activity and a delicious one. I opened Madeline. Madeline, can you hear us? Because we cannot hear you. Do you have something to say? Okay, we'll try again next time. Uh, Micah? I just wanted to say that um, Ms. Jingris, my English slash yoga teacher, is doing line calls, it's, it's an app, it's called Line, and she's doing yoga things over it, and also we're doing something called Pure Leaders, which is we do it, have a topic like, like, um, um, like Blind People Month or something like that, and we just, talk about those types of things. Thank you. Wonderful. 
Are you able and to from hear the, the chat, chat box? Some from the chat box, I'm hearing some really great ideas. I'll read a few I heard, and then if the moderators could step in and catch some of the others, I heard that someone is learning and practicing American Sign Language and Dutch. That's pretty cool. I'm hearing that people are reaching out to friends and trying to chat with them each day. Um, I'm hearing that somebody is um, supporting the idea of a book club and um, learning a new language. What are some, some of the other things from the moderators that you read? Learning the abacus, learning mm. to play the guitar, learning how to cook, singing, making bracelets and doing art, choosing a his, an historical figure and learning about them, going outside and jumping on a trampoline, crafts and puzzles, doing chores or texting my friends. Hey, if it keeps you busy, it keeps <laughs> you engaged and keeps you not feeling bored. Playing music and walking. Uh, if you do a book club, you might want to focus on English if you want to learn English or focus on a different language. Mm. Making masks oh, I love for skies. nurses. Yeah, that's what that's one I just read too, making masks for nurses. I love when the things that keep us not feeling bored, the things that keep us engaged actually are helpful to others. What a wonderful idea. I'll grab one more mm -hmm. from the, we'll try Madeline one more time, Adam. Did you get your mic working? There you go, Madeline. Good, good thing, good thing, good thing my, oh, sorry. Um, I was just saying, um, I I was a little bored when school when my school was closing and I was like very disappointed at that uh, my school was closing and now to get used to using Google Classroom to do all my homework. That is something to start working on. And then one more, Uriah. Hello? Hi, Uriah. Um, so things that I would do is just um, jujitsu and uh, cooking. Wonderful. Fair. Thank you for sharing. I also want to mention another comment that I overheard. Someone wrote, use this time to learn JAWS practice that technology people they're such important skills for for life for school for work and everything in between so thank you all for sharing ideas and i hope that you have been able to at least identify one or more things that you might be interested in trying during social distancing what i'm hoping is that everyone when this this whole thing is over and we're back to normal that people are actually doing and finding things that they really love uh, as a result of this. So please do remember that feeling bored doesn't have to be such a horrible thing. It's actually an opportunity for you to take action. Identify the feeling of being bored and then do something about it. Thanks all for listening. Hey, that is such a wonderful session. Thank you so much. We have so many different ideas, a book club, exercising, cooking, playing music. What a fun tradition. And I'm sure it will bring long lasting memories to your families of playing music together. Dancing, crafting, walking are some of the things that we do in our family. And thank you everyone at home for sharing all of the things that you do at home as well. And then you closed, you closed about talking with Jaws. And uh, what a great segue into tomorrow, because tomorrow we actually have a session on the Virtual Excel Academy. It's an intro to JAWS. And for those of you who are at home, if you have a PC, you can actually do a download of a trial version of JAWS to your PCs. So do a Google search. This is something you can do in your burden, in your boredom, sorry, not a burden, but a boredom. <laughs> and do a Google search for trial version of JAWS and see if you can get that downloaded to your computers at home so you're able to join us tomorrow. Kate, it's been wonderful having you. Your four sessions have been absolutely fantastic. 
And so those of you who haven't had a chance to see them, they are archived on both Paths to Literacy and APH's YouTube channel. Thank you so much. We will say goodbye for now and um, hope to see you at one of our conferences or something like that very soon. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Be well.